I am not an optimist. The Arch Traitor has maintained the upper hand since the outset. I draw comfort in the fact that I would likely not live to see his victory. But I hope my death may prevent it. Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to Lit Bashing, where the L stands for Legions, the I stands for Imperialis, and the Tabashing stands for Kit Bashing. Although popular, Corswain is a relatively new mini to the range at only a year and a bit old, so readability will be extra important. We need people to see this 8mm tall chap on the table and know immediately who he is, with very little memory or nostalgia to fall back on. As such, the features he must have are clearly his various monastic robes, including lion skin, his iconic high-winged helmet, and his two-handed greatsword held aloft. The decoration on his armour is nice, but we will have to consider how readable this will be at 8mm, but we may be able to paint some indication of its presence right at the end. It's our most requested lit bash as the first of 2024, and it's only right that I have a stinking cold for not only the first loyalist of the channel, but the first loyalist space marine I will have ever built and painted. I feel dirty just thinking about it, which probably explains the sickness. I very almost delayed this video until morning, but I figured I couldn't delay only my fifth lit bash, and who knows, I might feel even worse then. So please, join me on this filthy, filthy journey, and sorry if I'm not very talkative. The pieces go together fairly quickly, although the legs needed some adjustment to get the pose perfect. I was worried the Terminator legs would make the mini too tall, but the plate armour style of Cataphracti armour is so close to Mark III at this scale, it was worth it for the look. With our bits gathered, and also the pieces of marines on the table, we can begin the chopping process. Given the state of my fingers after the last video, I hope you can forgive me for doing this slightly off camera until I've healed up again. Corn can take his tithe next video. I thought I would be sculpting the helmet wings out of green stuff, which would have been fine, but bendy, and they really should be stiff, wahey, and so the answer was a good fist or two, wahey wahey. By shaving a chain fist down, it created something the perfect size and shape for wings, and ones that wouldn't bend during painting. It only makes sense that after last week, when I shaved some feathers down to make a fist, that this week I shave a fist down to make some feathers. We gather our bits, a Mark II helmet from one of the tank marines, legs and shoulders from a Cataphracti Terminator, a right arm from any normal-ish gun, and the left arm from the otherwise armless missile launcher marine. These were the two best arms in my search to meet in the middle for that vital two-handed grip on the greatsword. The rest of the mini, torso, backpack and cape, came from our old friend the Praetor, who seems to wheedle his way into lots of these videos. He also lends us his sword. I considered extending it, but it's already comically oversized and fit for purpose, so that saved a job. Once I had all the arms cut out, I could piece them together like teeny tiny Lego and attach the sword. Even without any green stuff, this is certainly good enough. But y'all know by now good enough isn't good enough on this channel, so we crack out the green stuff soon enough. But first a base. There's nothing particularly specific about the base of this mini to aid readability, but there is a lot of fire in the official artwork. So I might green stuff a little fire before painting if I feel like torturing myself with 8mm OSL. In any case, we just want a big rock and a few broken bits of metal. and a bunch of sand. That should all do nicely. I 
Whilst I spend far too long sculpting a lion skin cloak, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank, especially sexily, my new patrons, Gorgon's Forge, Bob the Mime, Michael, Bumpkin Bob and Daniel, as well as my super top backers, Edwin, Jason, Gavin, Patrick, Enric and Bradley, and everyone else who's helped contribute to materials and filming equipment over the past month. What a month it's been. Thank you also everyone for being so active in the Patreon chat, sharing ideas and sharing advice. And remember, if you're a Patreon and you come up with a video idea and it's good content, the mini's yours at the end. So thank you so much to Andrew who specifically requested this lip bash. Once it's done and I've got lots of photos to remember it by, I'll post it your way. If anyone watching wants to join in the fun and suggest some lip bashes for prizes, pop into the Patreon. It's where all the cool kids hang out. Cool kids being renowned for their penchant for 8mm scale strategy war games. Back to the sculpt. Which is now done. And onto the paint. I get the flames as white as possible with more coats than an entrance to Narnia. Then for a change I start with the base. Adding Steel Legion Drab and Xandri Dust to the dirt. And Dawnstone to the rocks. I add a little Auric Flesh for variety. Then shade the whole thing with Agarax Earthshade. Whilst the base dries, I dry brush the mini with Thunderhawk Blue to simulate edge highlighting, and then start the base colours in any order you like. I went Lead Belcher for all the metal areas, then Corn Red for the red accents dotted here and there, Barracknar Burgundy, and Cabalite Green round out the fun colours, Then the gold gets some Retributor armor. And the mantle gets a Zandri Dust base and a Seraphim Sepia shade. Orc Flesh brings out the green in the cloak and my eyes. And a splash of Cygor Brown darkens the lion's tail puffs and my eyes. Reichland Flesh Shade warms up the golds. And everything else gets Nelnoil Oil for shadows to taste. Now the base is dry, it gets a dry brush with Corax White. And we begin the flames, with Flash gets yellow, thinned down with yellow shade. Each base colour gets a layer, Mephiston Red, Runefang Steel. The green gets two, Warpstone Glow and an Edge of Auric Flesh. Bugman's Glow for the Burgundy. And Korax White for the Bone Coloured Tabard. The mantle gets a careful dry brush of Wraithbone and finish off the fire with Fire Dragon Bright, Mephiston and Corn Red, a little black 
and glazed with a thinned yellow shade. Finally, we trim as much of the armor as we have the energy to with Liberator Gold, and my voice runs out just in time to see what this loyalist looks like. Thank you again everyone so much for watching. I haven't got the voice for much more of a spiel than that, so please just like, subscribe, comment, share, all the usual stuff. And I'll see you next Lit Bash with a lot more interesting things to say. Peace and love, and keep on Lit Bashing.